Takatako. A hey pakakal emba futop katipu fakani nymfameti. Hipunha hitaka tako. Hipunha itadak sembe te ifi fakani tiko kunyuka. Hipunha itakata goti ekunyuma o ekunyuma eyem leti mahme. Hipunha itadak si sifa si hochi. Signasiem, Johnson and Johnson, Pfizer, nin sinofam. Hipunha efi yankankani ti infectionia ka hintani wala take it. The Gambia Ministry of Health Kaliflifi ano one katachop hipunha. Kusik sitil ngasu wa ninsusubo paka patila. Nyao sipesi ninsefu na tanotan. Ekinefe yankankani tike ukunyuka. Nyao sipesi tanotan ayemtepu na kote nufi walante te hinumeti. Ukatana pusa yol sipesi na chisuma walante nkehum. Nyao sipesi ninsefu na alimi ni man. Walante alcohol based hand rub. Nyao sipesi tanotan ayemitike yukuma walante te hinuma. Ange efe kesi nke ukunyuka nge temahmamtuna. Mama mtu na kutaka atako sitil susubok se muse na tikata kulan kukunyu kenge. Di Gambia Ministry of Health kaliflifi unaplontu katu utakula na kukunyu kenge katika yekuna tuna. Kichubika hilime mpoka Ministry of Health ni Gambia Country Coordinating Mechanism. Kimi katika yenge mpoka yu global phone. Kimi tikata kulan HTB ni malaria. Na lefia ka yonkal akadime hechanga yonkal 1025. Muzika Muzika Muzika
out there, it's 8 p.m. and we're broadcasting live from our studios here on the MDI Road. This is the news in our headlines tonight. His Excellency Adam Abaro arrives in Tunisia to attend the 8th Tokyo International Conference on African Development TCAD. The Ministry of Interior warns drivers plying the roads across the country without number plates to find documentation. In sport, football stakeholders head to the polls in 24 hours to elect a new executive committee to run the affairs of Gambian football. Plus, rising temperatures in Tanzania affect coffee yields by 50%. Elsewhere, Ukraine averts fears of disasters as Russia restores power at the Zaporizhia nuclear plant. Well, that's the top of the news and much more coming up with me, Fatou Eli Kamloshi. Many thanks for joining us. Welcome to the news. It's great to have you here. Now we begin the bulletin with the presidency as His Excellency Adam Abaro arrives in Tunisia to attend the 8th Tokyo International Conference on African Development, TCAD. President Abaro and delegation, which consists of the Minister of Finance and Economic Affairs, Sidi Keita, Foreign Affairs Minister Dr. Mamadou Tangara, and Chief of Staff Maud Sisi arrive earlier Friday morning for the high profile meeting which brings together African leaders and the Japanese Prime Minister for discussions on enhancing economic and trade cooperation. Our Presidential Affairs Correspondent, Momodu Jalo, is with the delegation. The President, His Excellency Adam Baro, left Banjul aboard a commercial Royal Air Maroc flight for Tunisia. Inside the aircraft, his unexpected arrival generated excitement as he greeted passengers on the three-hour flight to Casablanca. passengers, it was one rare moment to fly with the president on the same commercial flight. The president took time to meet as many of the passengers as possible, exchanging pleasantries with them. The plane had a brief stop at the Mohammed V International Airport in Casablanca, where the president and delegation had a transit. After nearly an hour in Casablanca, the president boarded another commercial flight to Tunis, arriving early in the afternoon. He was received at the Tunis Cartage Airport by Tunisian Prime Minister Nigel Boudin with full honors. After the usual airport ceremonies, the president was driven to his hotel. He will join other leaders for the opening ceremony of the Tokyo International Conference on African Development at the International Cultural Center in Central Tunis. Mohdou Jalo, GRCS News. And to a media release from the Ministry of the Interior, which informs the general public, including drivers, that some vehicles plying the roads across the country are doing so without number plates. The Ministry hereby reminds the general public that such a practice is against the Motor Traffic Admin Amendment Act 2013 of the Gambia. Section 25A, which prohibits use of vehicles without number plates, says, one, a person shall not use or cause or permit another person to use a vehicle without a number plate. Two, a person who contravenes section one commits an offense and is liable to conviction with a fine of nothing less than $10,000 C and not more than $20,000 C and in default to imprisonment for two years with hard labor. Clause three also states, the police shall keep the vehicle in its custody until a number plate is affixed to it, and each day a number plate remains unfixed, the person or the owner shall pay a fine of $100. In view of the above, all owners of vehicles plying the roads without registered number plates within the country are required to install a legally obtained number plate as soon as possible. This is a security concern, and those found wanting will be subjected to the full force of the law the release ends. 
Still with police martyrs, because the Gambia Police Force, with support from the United Nations Development Program, has trained 25 officers from various police units in the country on the newly introduced Geographic Information System, GIS, a computer system for capturing, storing, and displaying data. Rahibite was at the closing ceremony and tells us more. For two days, they were engaged by experts on the usage of the Geographic Information System, a technology introduced to aid the police in the effective delivery of service. Geographic Information Systems is now used by many organizations to make maps that communicate, perform, analyze, say information, and distribute resources. Its introduction to the Gambi Police Force is a welcome development, and according to Kaded ASP Bintanjai, PRO of the Gambi Police, it is a development that is very significant to policing. The GIS platform was built for the Gambia Police Force to incorporate features that will help locate GPF facilities such as stations, posts, bases, barracks, and etc. As well as other resources but not limited to manpower, vehicles, and office equipment. The Gambia Police Force is a security entity with a clear-cut vision of managing the affairs of its staff. Therefore, this platform will undoubtedly assist the senior management of the Gambia Police Force to not only monitor locations of facilities and other resources, but also help come with informed decisions on... Assistant IGP Ibrahim Abba said the newly developed GIS app for the Gambia Police Force is long overdue and will be of great use to them in manpower coordination, resource distribution, and in the long run, crime service. In the long run or in the short term, it can be developed to enable the police map out where crime spots are and to do a survey. And when you do that, you will be able to have an informed decision of where to deploy your operations. This facility is capable of doing that. So you are privileged to have that uh, expertise trained. Of course, it was in two days, but I was told the training was so pregnant. A lot of ground has been covered. You were able to do a lot from yesterday and today. In fact, I found you doing something very interesting, which I have also learned within the five minutes I was here. Silangua, mentoring and evaluation specialist from the UNDP, urged the participants to incorporate the knowledge gained in their daily activities and make best use of the geographic information system. The training is not just for us to come here and sit and look at the app, but we make sure we try to incorporate it into our daily activities. So I encourage all the participants to go back and try to use the platform and also try to encourage their colleagues, put them through, at least they can become the TOTs for all the police officers. Speaking on behalf of her colleagues, Sergeant Anton Yang expressed gratitude for the training and promised to make best use of what they've learned. This training is very important and we have learned new things <coughs> and it makes the work easy for us at the station level and to know how to use geographical information system. Because if you are at your station, you want to know the resources to a police post or a police station in another area, you can quickly click on this system and know the resources there, the personnel and other things. Now that they've been trained, they will be the focal persons for this project and expectations are that they will pass on the knowledge gained to their colleagues in their respective units so as to maximize the benefits of the geographic information system. Rohi Bite, GRTS. To the Lower River region, where Soma Girls Guide Skills Training Center recently graduated a cohort of 30 trainees at a ceremony held at the center. The graduates, mainly from the Lower River and North Bank regions, completed a six month training in poultry and a small ruminant production as part of a support from the EU Africa Trust Fund uh, through IMVF. Let's take a listen to the IMVF project coordinator, Joanna Martins, in this excerpt. The aim of this project has been to reinforce the opportunities in the rural areas of the country. Saying so, it's key that training opportunities are also offered outside of the greater Banjul area. So for us it's key to see the training opportunities also in the LRR uh, and that the youths from all over the country can see LRR as a place where we can also acquire important skills 
to thrive in the future. So Girls Guide is one of the few, probably the only training center in the area, was of course uh, uh, targeted as a key institution to work with. Um, so this decentralization is key, uh, and we can only we are we are also uh, proud to say that the achievement is not only about the 13 youths that have been uh, trained, but it's also about the work to reinforce the center um, that needs to be acknowledged. So, dear governor, we can only request, it's a humble request of course, that uh, the center can be followed up in terms of management. We know that management is still a point that we need to strengthen, but we can only do it together, and I'm sure um, the, government, uh, the governor together with the um, Regional Education uh, Directorate, we probably can see how best can we continue supporting the center so the center can keep on this track of uh, strengthening their capacity, always uh, adapting to the needs of the youth and offering uh, training offers that are really aligned with the needs uh, of our young people in the country. Why poultry and small ruminants? because we know that the agribusiness sector is key for the development of the country and we feel that here there are opportunities for the youths to succeed. This is GRTS News with me, Fatou Elika Maloshi. We'll take a short break. Sports News is up next. Stay. For the first time in the game, UCMAS, in partnership with Africa, presents a quick reaction thinking educational show. Students between 6 and 13 years. Questions, four, four, answers, two, five, eight. speed, mental abilities, mathematical problems two, and solutions. Grand prize of 30,000 for the first winner. The UCMAS arithmetic competition. Every Tuesday at 7 p.m. and replayed on Saturday at 2 p.m. on GRTS. COVID-19 is real. Here are some steps you can observe to keep you and your family safe. Get vaccinated against COVID-19. The vaccine is safe and effective and can protect you from getting sick. The vaccine is readily available in any health facility, free of charge. Currently, there are three different types of vaccines, namely Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer and Sinopharm. The goal of the Gambia Ministry of Health is to vaccinate everybody, young and old people, including children aged 12 years and above. Hand washing with soap when done correctly is critical in the fight against COVID-19. It is one of the cheapest, most effective things you can do to protect yourself and others. Wash your hands frequently, including every time you enter the home or office. Avoid shaking hands with other people. After you cough or sneeze and before you eat, use soap and water or an alcohol-based hand drop. Clean frequently touch surfaces, frequently with chlorine or alcohol solution, for example, kitchen tables, work desk, etc. Remember, no one is safe until we are all safe. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Health and the Gambia Country Coordinating Mechanism with funding from the Global Fund to Fight AIDS, TB and Malaria. For more information, please call our toll-free number 1025. Welcome back. Now in sports, in just under 24 hours, football stakeholders will head to the polls to elect a new executive committee to run the affairs of Gambian football. 77 delegates will vote to either maintain Lamin Bajo or Kaba Bajo as president of the Gambia Football Federation or Sadi Bukamaso, who is seeking to stop the increment from getting a third term. Saturday's high stakes election is seen as one of the most heated races for Gambia 
Ukrainian football's top office. Our sports editor, MS Jalo, previews the much-talked-about election and how the outcome could impact many young talents aspiring to become professional footballers and the development of the beautiful game across the Gambia. Young London Jassy is one of many hidden talents in the Gambia. Spotted here playing football on this pussy pitch in Brikamanding, a small settlement in the Central River region about 200 kilometers from Banjul. The crafted left-footed player is working hard to become a professional footballer, a dream he is determined to achieve at all costs. <laughs> The lean and tricky player who idolizes Scorpion Smith Field Abdullah Jalo, with whom he shares striking similarities, is hoping to follow in the footsteps of his star player by representing the Gambia. But whilst the young star strives in difficult conditions to make it through to the top in football, little does he know that miles away, his future and that of many other aspiring players across the country will be decided in this hall. When football stakeholders gather to elect the next GFF president at the country's football house, the incumbent Lamin Kaba Bajo, who has been leading the Gambia Football Federation for eight years, comes up against Sadi Bukamoso in a high-stakes election for the top job in Gambian football on Saturday, August 27th. The election is not only shaping up as one of the tightest races in Gambian football, but also looks to be a crucial jumpstart to more developments in the game, including the molding of countless talents in the country, like the commanding London jersey, who is not shy to show of his God-given skills. Both Kaba and Kamaso have been vigorously campaigning with pledges of stronger focus on grassroots football and good infrastructure for every Gambian child to play the beautiful game. We have developed and implemented clear and precise grassroots football development programs in collaboration with FIFA and CAF and the Gambia Schools Football Association. Infrastructure is one of the key factors impeding the rapid development of the game in the country and on the continent in its entirety. My team also have plans to construct five regional fields in the provinces and the construction of a swimming pool at the football hotel, which is at an advanced stage. We are going to regularize grassroots football. For far too long, there has not been grassroots tournament here. The academies don't play. You have all these coaches who train these kids in their neighborhoods. There is no platform for them to showcase that. We are going to regularize that. And all the kids will be registered on a platform. Every academy will go to the regional football association that you are to be registered on a digital platform so that you don't change the age with your child welfare card because we will monitor that. Who has the better ideas to fulfill those campaign promises? Rest on the stakeholders set to vote in Saturday's elective Congress to decide Gambian football's new top executive. The Gambia is a football crazy country with football pitches a common sight around the country. The beautiful game is played in every corner and every available space with abundance of raw talents needing support and the right structures to evolve. And it is for these reasons that the 77 delegates with votes are expected to make informed decisions by entrusting the country's biggest sport in the right hands. The stakeholders are the ones that know what is right. Uh, they have somebody who's been there for eight years. If they want to maintain the person, it's up to them. If they think um, they, they have not done well, they want to bring in a new uh, person to come and lead, it's up to them. So we want to allow the stakeholders to go ahead and make a decision on the 27 based on what they think is in their best interest and in the best interest of the country. And I believe that they are mature enough, they are adults who know exactly what they want, and they will do the right thing. While stakeholders head to the polls on Saturday to choose between Bajo and Kamaso, the decision they make on Saturday will impact landing and many others thriving in difficult conditions to become professional footballers. The ball is now in the court of the football stakeholders who will either vote for continuity on the Kaba or Sadibu to restore confidence in a crucial election which will save the development of Gambian football. Momodes Jala, GR Sports. You can follow us tomorrow for a full broadcast of the JFF elections live on GRTS TV and of course on Facebook at GRTS TV live from 9.30 a.m.
We'll be back with news beyond our borders right after this break. Stay with us. COVID-19 mukuso torinati. Simfanya no felesi mentano mensete tanka anila dimbayalo. COVID-19 pengolo tabang akoita alano warta andasi tanka kuja mapala sako sasa. COVID-19 pengo parero ngobe soto rinna jara dinkiralu tole. Asifa sabanga wale soto. Johnson and Johnson, Pfizer, ani Sinopharm. Ye nyunu mengo menta akadoku sifa kilu ngole kejato kono. Andu ye mengo menta jote dodo kuna. Kilinta nyunu kono bang. A pengo koita. Asiba li COVID-19 janka rola. Asiba li lopitani lala. Waramfang saya. Gambi ya la jata kende ya bunda hamo mingene tipurumobe ye pengu. Kabiri ndinding fokeba. Kabo sanjita ni mfula katawe isantola. Kebu loku ni nsafu nola watu wati mu COVID-19 kele rambaleti. Menda di ya tatoma lupeti. Sila sono ya rimba isi menda. Kefango anido nyolu tanka. Alukara albuloku watu wati na lufutato suwa kono anido kudulalito. Kane bulodu mmobulu nito tota itisota. Aninje Yen nibe do moro kela. Safu no ni njiyota warang alcohol based hand rub. Alkari sae ka la dulali fita warali keku watu wati. Sako dulali menu boko kobalu kono anin tabululu. Anin kulora yin la warang alcohol. To nyala nyato ta soto tete katalari ke nyin COVID-19 la. Baru wanya wanya nyin kurang tententa kantora nyin sanji fulo kono. Watali nga demba nga nyin kurang kele katu ni mo kili mantanka moto mbele mantanka. Meni ya nyin kibaru natale wale Ministry of Health anin gami ya country coordinating mechanism. Mena de pansiro bota global phone bulu meni ya nuko wale ka AIDS kele TB anin malaria. Na lefta kuma koyo la hani kabi al 1025 kumani. Welcome back. Now, coffee farmers attribute the drop to climate change, which has intensified drought, diseases, and killed insects that pollinate coffee plants. The Tanzania Coffee Research Institute and the Tanzania Coffee Board are now teaching farmers how to adapt to changing weather conditions. CGTN's Daniel Kijo has more. Elina Jamlai is finding it hard to grow coffee the traditional way. The effects of climate change are taking a toll on the once coffee-rich Kilimanjaro highlands. Increased temperatures have come with diseases. Tanzania is the fourth largest coffee producer in Africa, with 90% of its coffee being produced by smallholder farmers like Elinaja. The remaining 10% is produced by large estates. Elinaja says without special climate-resistant seeds, coffee production will be no more. These diseases that we deal with now, like leaf rust and CBD, did not exist in the 1970s. I'm no expert, but I think it's due to the change in the climate. The Tanzanian Coffee Board is a government entity tasked with regulating and promoting the coffee business in Tanzania. Official data from the body says coffee employs about 7% of the population pumping out about 70,000 metric tons annually. But they acknowledge that coffee production in the Kilimanjaro region is under threat. As temperature increases, actually the ability of coffee, the potentiality of coffee to produce uh, uh, the flowers and beans is also affected. The incidence of pests and diseases, for example, also increases and the coffee is also affected. But researchers at the Tanzania Coffee Research Institute have teamed up with the Tanzanian Coffee Board to revive the industry by growing and developing drought-resistant coffee seedlings. The institute has obtained more than 60,000 quality coffee seedlings which have been distributed to farmers. We have perfected three methods of seed multiplication of improved coffee varieties. The grafting technique and chrono propagation and hybrid seed production. All these three methods we are promoting by training coffee growers to make sure they multiply seeding of improved coffee varieties which are resistant to climate change. Coffee contributes about a quarter of Tanzania's agricultural GDP and is a strategic crop grown in the country's 17 regions. Tanzania exports 90% of coffee to Japan, Italy and the US, while the remaining 7% is consumed locally. These drought-tolerant coffee seedlings are also resistant to coffee berry and coffee leaf rust diseases. Researchers here believe that they may hold the key to saving Tanzania's coffee sector in the long run. Daniel Kijo, CGTN, Moshi, Tanzania. 
Well, President Emmanuel Macron indicated France and Algeria should move beyond their painful shared history and look to the future. On August 26, at the start of a three-day visit to the North African country. More in this France 24 report. A red carpet welcome for Emmanuel Macron as he touched down in the Algerian capital on Thursday. The French president is on a high-stakes three-day visit aimed at mending ties with the former colony. Algeria's president, Abdelmajid Tebboun, welcomed Macron, who is accompanied by seven of his ministers, as part of a 90-member delegation. We hope to open up new horizons in the partnership and cooperation between Algeria and France. Macron's visit comes the same year Algeria marks its 60th anniversary of independence from France, with relations between the two sides remaining rocky ever since. We have a shared past. It's complex, painful, and at times it has hindered us looking to the future. This past should be what's common, not something that blocks us. But while France is eager to look to the future, Paris is aware the only way to do this is by honestly confronting its past in Algeria. Together we have decided to mandate a commission, which includes historians from both sides, to open our archives. This will allow us to look at the entire period of history, which is important for us. From the start of colonization to the war of independence, without taboos. With Macron's trip geared towards France's future relationship with Algeria, the French president will be meeting Algeria's youth, its innovators and startups. The security situation in neighboring Mali will also be discussed with the Algerian president. Macron is likely to pressure Africa's largest gas exporter to increase supplies as Europe looks for alternatives to gas imports from Russia. Elsewhere, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky said the world narrowly avoided a radiation disaster as electricity to Ukraine's Zaporizhia nuclear plant was cut for hours due to Russian shelling in the area. Allegations that most scrutinize. France 24 has more. The first time in its history that the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant has been disconnected from the power grid. Ukraine's nuclear energy provider, Energo Atom, decided to cut off the two remaining reactors, saying that nearby fires had caused damage to overhead power lines. Ukraine and Russia have been accusing each other of launching strikes around Europe's largest nuclear power plant, which is currently occupied by Moscow's forces. Kyiv claims they're stocking heavy weapons inside the building, accusations that Russia denies but fears of a nuclear accident continue to grow as tension builds. The diesel generators immediately started up, providing the plant with electricity to help it after the blackout. The IAEA and other international organizations must act more quickly because every minute that the Russian military remains on site brings the risk of global nuclear disaster. In France, President Emmanuel Macron met with the head of the International Atomic Energy Agency, Raphael Grossi, asking that experts gain access to the site as soon as possible. Working and stabilizing the site. Speaking to France 24, Grossi said he's hopeful that this will happen shortly. Getting there is, of course, extremely complex. So we have to have all the security, security in the sense of uh, physical security, not being shot at. On top of that, we have to um, determine exactly the terms of the, of the mission. Now there is um, general recognition that uh, we need to be there. We need to be there soon. Um, uh, Kyiv uh, accepts it. Moscow accepts it. We need to go. Is very soon days or weeks? Days. Mm. The United Nations has meanwhile called for demilitarization of the power plant, which in normal times accounts for a fifth of Ukraine's electricity production. 
Well, that's all in this bulletin, but uh, before we let go, a quick look at our top stories once again. His Excellency Adam Abaro has arrived in Tunisia to attend the 8th Tokyo International Conference on African Development TCAD. The Ministry of Interior warned drivers plying the roads across the country without number plates to find documentation. In sports, football stakeholders will head to the polls in 24 hours to elect a new executive committee to run the affairs of Gambian football. Plus, rising temperatures in Tanzania is affecting coffee yields by 50%. Elsewhere, Ukraine has averted fears of disaster as Russia restores power at the Zaporizhia nuclear plant. Well, thanks for the pleasure of your company. Stay tuned to GRTS for more interesting programs. I'll be back again at 2200 hours for more. Bye for now.